Hi, I'm Mike Larson. Welcome to the third stage of our painting process. Now, if you recall, the first part was we looked at a paragraph of Scripture and we read it and we studied it and we tried to pull as much as we could out of it, what it was saying to us. Then in the second step, we picked just one line out of that Scripture or one thought. And that was the thought that, that really jumped out. And it was the one thing we wanted to take away and remember and be reminded of. And that's what Christian art does. It reminds us of important things. Um, and now we're in the third step. And that third step is simply to um, come up with some ideas, to take the, the one line and, and relate it to our lives, relate it to the world, relate it to other parts of Scripture, and, and come away with a story. And then that story... We then have visuals, and with visuals, we can start to then do sketches. And from the sketches, we have ideas for our final painting. So this is a real pivotal point in the process. Now, if you recall, the, the one verse that we're going to focus on talked about how God comforts us. And then how we then, likewise, go and comfort other people. It's a powerful verse. And it's a very important verse that, that really sums up much of Christianity. Let me read it for you. God, who comforts us in all our afflictions, so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction, with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted. Now that's from um, 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. Great verse. Okay, now, you know, one of the first things I thought of as I was uh, thinking about this verse is that this really is what it means to be the body of Christ. Now, the body of Christ is another way of saying the church. Now, it's not the church building, but it's the people of the church. And the people of the church care for one another, and they help one another, and they need each other. And in that process, they function like a body. All parts are important, and they all work together. Um, I was thinking to myself then, the next step in this process, I was thinking, how is it that, that we are comforted by God? Because that's the first step. First, we're comforted by God. And then we take that, and we look at that, and we learn from that, and then we pass that on. And we're overfilled with the love of God, and we pass that on. Um, so there's many ways in which God has set forth um, his comfort to us. One way is prayer. We simply connect with God in prayer. It's, it's incredibly valuable when you really think about it. You can talk to God anytime you want to. And, and be still and listen for him to talk back to you. It's incredibly powerful and a great means of receiving comfort. Prayer is so powerful. And I encourage you to have a really strong prayer life. Um, the next step is the Holy Spirit comforts us. You know, when, when Christ was leaving, when he had risen from the dead and he had come back to his disciples, he said to them, I leave with you the comforter. He actually called the Holy Spirit the comforter. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit, to comfort. Um, it has, has many jobs as well as calling, enlighten, gathering, and sanctifying. The Holy Spirit is very active in your life. And, and the Holy Spirit sends you peace and brings peace to you. It's the comforter. Um, another way is simply angels. Angels are, are comforters. Um, children have uh, their own angels, and they're comforted and protected by them. Angels uh, bring comfort to us. We don't even know it. You know, we could, we could be uh, unawares of angels in our midst. They're out there. The, uh, the next thing is, is really ties to this and, and how we receive comfort from God. And that is simply God puts people in our lives. And those people he puts in our lives make a difference. And they bring us Christ. And so simply by being in a body of Christ, being in a church, getting involved in that church, knowing the people in that church, that's where uh, the people work, work incredibly well. And it's a great source 
of receiving comfort. And um, so people. The other place where God brings comfort is simply his word. Um, his word through the spoken word of a sermon, hearing a great sermon that brings you peace and comfort, to um, just diving into the scripture. There's, it's amazing. If you would just spend some time reading scripture, how that brings so much comfort and peace to your life. It's, it's absolutely incredible. So I, I encourage you to crack open your Bible. If you're craving comfort of God, it's there. God speaks to your soul through his word, and it's incredibly powerful. So um, the Bible and his word and the word is a great way of receiving comfort. You know, there's some other ways, too, that we don't even really think about. Um, doctors, professionals, psychologists, all these, all these people with special training um, are driven often with the influence of God and the support of God and the direction of God. And they, God works through them. And the last thing, comfort, um, is a pastor, a good pastor that, that, um, that knows you, spends time with you, and you spend time with, with him. And, and um, a pastor is crucial to your spiritual development and he's crucial to your comfort. When, you, when you're, you have really tough times, it's so nice to have a pastor you can call and say, I'm really struggling. And pastors are there for you. Uh, I have a great pastor. I appreciate him so much. I know I can call him anytime that I have a problem and he will be there for me. And that is so important to me. And um, I appreciate my pastor, Richard, and, and I encourage you to go to a church that, that has a pastor that wants to get to know you as well. And um, there's, so there's all these different ways that it's, it's not just one way, but all these different means that God has said, I'm going to comfort you. I'm going to be there for you. Um, so in looking at all this, I was thinking to myself, I kind of have an idea of the story. I have the, the person who's struggling and hurting and, and deflated and empty and in and, and pain. And, and God comes along and he fills them up again. He gives them wind. He, he fills their sails. He, he, it's almost like the person physically is a balloon that's deflated and he comes and he brings you back up again. And so I was playing with that image and I was thinking, what could I do with that? Well, you know, you know, you could start with a, a deflated person who's, who's, you know, not really looking like a person because they're all deflated, right? And, and here comes Christ, and, and he comes with wind. And in that wind here, you can see there's, here's Christ, and he's, he's bringing this person back into fullness again. You know, to, to be full again, to be complete. And that was one concept I was kicking around. And then I thought, you know, I kind of like that. That's really kind of neat. I, I like the imagery of that. But, but it didn't, I don't know, there's a gut feeling you get as an artist where sometimes um, it works and sometimes it just, it, it's a good idea, but it's not the idea. So I kept thinking and working and, and I thought about the process. Okay, we've got, Jesus, who comes to you when, when, you're, not, when, you're, when you're hurt and, and you have afflictions and you're in pain, he comes to you by all those means we talked about. And then you help others. So, oops. <laughs> so it's a process. There's, there's three people here. It's, it's not just you receiving, only receiving, and, and that's all. No, it's you receiving from Christ to be brought to wholeness and completeness again and, and contentment, right? And then you realize this connection. You realize that. And you know that this came from God. This was not an accident. This was not random. This is God's work right here. This is God's work for you because he loves you and he cares about you. And, and he, this, this verse is saying, pass that on. 
realize that this comes from God, and help other people who are hurting. So what does that look like visually? Flowers have life, and, and uh, flowers need to be nurtured, right? You have to water them. And so there was something about flowers that, that, and, and bouquets of flowers that really spoke to me. Because the flower, the flower is in, in, in some respects like our soul. That uh, there are times when it's, it's dying and there are times it's flourishing. And there are, there are times we're sad and there are times we're happy. And, and there are times we're in pain and we need help and we need support and we have afflictions. And, and in those times that, that we're down, it kind of reminds me of, a, of a, a flower that hasn't been watered in a long time and it's wilted and it's dying, right? Um, but then on the other hand, when, when, when we've been touched by God and when, when we've been renewed, and we all have ups and downs, and it's normal, right? But when we've been renewed by Christ um, and, and we're, we're filled again, and we're put back on track. Now it's at this time, our flowers are full. It's a bouquet. It's beautiful, right? It's, it's colorful and it's, it's, uh, it's fun to look at. It's fun to be around. And, and it, it's, it, it's magnetic, right? And there's, so I wanted to use flowers to represent that. And in a, lot of, in a lot of Christian art, what we're doing is we're taking a concept or a feeling and, and we're trying to represent it and have something to represent it, right? So I'm going to use flowers for that. Now, I also have this process, you know, and I thought the simplest thing to do is to actually show the process. So here we have a couch, okay? And on the couch is a person, okay? Now, it's okay when you're doing this just to do stick people to start with. That's fine because, you know, from a stick person, you can always fill in the different uh, parts. So I've got a stick person here, and from that, I can just fill in the body, and I can fill in the legs, and, and then it looks more like a decent drawing, right? Okay, so I've got a person sitting on the couch. Now, I want this person to be distraught. I want to show the, the agony, right? So I'm, they're going to have their hands on their head, and they're going to be sad, right? And they're maybe looking downward in, in distraught and in anger. You know, you've been there. We've all been there, right? And so there, there's flowers coming out of their heads. Now, those flowers are wilted, and they're dying, and they're dead. Right? Behind him is Christ with a watering can. Okay? And he's watering behind. There's his head. There's a watering can. It's a real rough sketch. Christ comes behind the person on the couch with his watering can and he's tilting that water and the water is flowing. There's some really beautiful references to water. Um, Christ says, I have living water that you don't know about, as he's talking to the woman on the well. There's a lot of references to water, water and baptism, right? Through the water, we're joined with Christ, and through the word and the water, we're joined with Christ, and we're given that promise in baptism. So every time we see water and we splash it on our face, it's a reminder, hey, I'm a child of God. This water is a sign. So here we have water again, refreshing, renewing, bringing back to life this person who's struggling. Now, what I thought of doing at this point is we could make this one image, one painting, and then have a second painting where this part, where this person now who's been renewed, their flowers now in the second part are alive and beautiful and, and, and full because he's been comforted by Christ. So, I thought of a second painting, but then it dawned on me. There's something to the two being in one. So, this is maybe, here is a blue couch, 
And then we have this transition point, and this is a room with maybe a window in the back, right? So they're backlit. There's something about being backlit that, that gives a halo type effect that it can be powerful and it would be helpful. And so, but then over on this other side is that same look of a couch, but it's a different couch. It's a different color or a little bit different design, but it's connected here. And this person now is the one comforting. And so maybe he's sitting on the couch with the person, right? And maybe the other person has their heads just like he did in their hands. They're not doing well. And they're rolled up in a ball on the couch, right? Their flowers are dead. This person's flowers are alive. He likewise then, in a sign of comfort, puts a hand on the shoulder just to say, I'm here for you. Okay? I, I hear you. I'm sorry you're suffering. I'm here for you. Job's comforters uh, did a great job when they started. They, they basically just were there for him. They didn't speak, really. They were just there. And uh, great comforting. To, to just be there and show I care about you enough to, to not be anywhere else and be right here. I'm going to put my hand on your shoulder to show you I care about you. Okay? Now, um, in, in this hand here is this same watering bucket as he's watering those flowers. And you can see from his dead flowers to his alive flowers, from this person's dead flowers, he's watering and they will become alive. She, they will be blown up again and given new life. They will be comforted. And so that's the image. Same back window, maybe a little bit different, but um, that's the concept I have for my painting. Now, the next step, I need to find reference material, reference sources. I need to find a model or an image of a person sitting on the couch distraught. I need to find someone or make something or even do drawings and sketches of someone with water to be Christ, to be watering. And then over here, another person and this person a second time, them helping them. So I need um, three models that I need to find and a few props, some flowers, the watering can, and then uh, the scene, the couch, the background, that sort of thing. So that's what I have for my painting idea. Now, I encourage you to come up with your own ideas. Uh, this was my idea. You might come up with something completely different. You may have even picked a different verse. That's fine. It's all good. But I encourage you at this stage to go from concepts, thoughts, story, to sketches. So here's my painting idea. And um, I'm, I'm anxious to see what yours looks like. Next session, we'll um, look at source material and, and we'll look at the, the, um, all these ideas and sketches with something I can paint from. All right. Thanks for watching. See you soon.